Hey guys, Sauce here with episode 5 of Metagame, but this time we're going to shake things up a bit and talk about teams. I really wanted to do a separate series on teams, and perhaps I will if there's enough interest, but for now let's just cover the basics. This episode I'll be discussing the most common team strategy, which is to have one support and one aggressor. A support is a player that stays on the sidelines and tries to predict the match a couple steps in advance. They like to try and guess if their targets are going to jump or roll, and punish hard if they guess correct. For this reason, supports are good at getting early kills, and also saving their partners. To the uneducated eye, it will look like the support is carrying the team with tons of kills and epic saves, but a support cannot do their job without the aggressor. The aggressor likes to go in and rely on nothing but their own technical skill and reaction times. Their focus is mostly on execution and optimal combos and punishes. They will get the most out of every hit, and try to deal more damage than they take. The really interesting part about teams is that you can try out every character in different roles to see what works best for you and your partner. There are combinations besides support and aggressor, both discovered and undiscovered, so don't be afraid to experiment. Before I finish, I want to say a few more things that I think everyone should consider when developing a team style. First, long combos are inherently worse than shorter ones. My rule is as soon as I need to guess on a tech chase or DI, take a look at the other two players. You may find that throwing yourself at another player will benefit your team more than trying to extend an extra 10 or 15% on your current combo. Second, don't be caught doing nothing. Teams is not the place to condition or bait your opponents, so the less dash dancing in mind games, generally the better. Finally, don't be afraid to spam shield. In 2v2, Grab instantly becomes worse since it usually gets interrupted or takes too long to build up damage. Therefore, shielding instantly becomes a better option. Not to mention, with so many hitboxes being thrown out, the chances that your shield will extend something to hit the other players becomes better. If you're wondering what to practice with your partner, learn how each of you likes to generate hitboxes and space around each other. If one of you knows to shield and the other knows to attack, you can create a lot of safe pressure. So that's it for now. Let me know in the comments if you think a team series would be worthwhile. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to click the annotation for the next video.